All right. So this is the August meeting of the agency. Uh, chair is Dave Scott, Vice Chair is Unit Sutton. Um, staff tonight is, is me, Deb Jones. Um, there is an opportunity to address the commission under public communications if you're not an applicant or have an agenda item. If you want to do that, you need to raise your virtual hand. So on an Apple device, you'll find that at the top of your screen on a PC, it's at the bottom. If you're on the phone, it is star nine. Okay, take it away, Eunice, because I'm not hearing Dave. Okay, I don't have the agenda in front of me or anything like that. So uh, we'll have a roll call, um, call the meeting to order at whatever time this is, seven something. And I think we have Barbara Williams, we have Barbara Block, and we have myself, Eunice Sutman, in attendance. Um, do we have any uh, approval of the minutes to do? Um, actually, let's see if there's public communications first. Um, that's on first. So if there's anyone who's not an applicant, you know, you just need to raise your hand if you need to address the commission on some other item. Does not look like it. I don't see any hands. Great. So then uh, do we have minutes that we need to have approval of? July 14, 2021. Okay. Have, have you guys had a chance to look at those July 14th minute, minutes? Barbara, it looks like you're wanting to say something. Oops. No, she's frozen. Oh, no. <laughs> ah! Yep, Barbara, you do appear to be frozen. <laughs> so, Eunice is frozen. I move that we accept the minutes. Thank you. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. I'll second. Okay, motion's been made and seconded to approve the minutes of July 14th. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And any opposed? Any abstentions? So moved. Uh, do we have any old? Uh, nope. New applications. New applications. Thank yep. you. So the first one is the replacement of Groton Utilities structures. Um, so I'm going to promote the applicants here so they can run through the plans with you. I know this is the first time that um, you'll be seeing it. Yes, can you hear me? This is Kevin from BHI Energy. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Glenn Webb, BHI Energy. Excellent. Yeah. Yep. Anybody else with you? I, you should have Jose Hernandez. Yes, he is here too. I promoted him as well. Yes, good afternoon, everybody. Jose Hernandez, BHI Energy. Awesome. So what we'd like to do, <clears throat> I'm not sure how this works with Zoom. Maybe Jose knows. Uh, we'd like to put our Together on screen. Is there a way to do that? Okay, so you you should be able to share your screen, but if you're not sure, I can I can do that. I have a location map loaded up and I have your plans. And if you want, you can walk through that if that's easier for you. Yes. Yes, please. Okay. All right, hold on just a minute. So just to give you the background, Clint Webb is the environmental specialist for our group. Jose Hernandez is engineer slash he's a PE that helped put the package together. And I'm just the project manager. Okay, so what I have up is an aerial photograph of Drosdick Drive and the area where the um, poles are to be replaced. So I'm just kind of, I'm hovering around the area right now. You can see this is the ledges apartments. Um, La Triumph is across the street, uh, the reservoir, um, and then you can see the power lines coming through this property and it's, it's this area right here where there are trees. Um, so from there I'm going to just go to the plans and Kevin you can walk them through it. Hey, Clint. Right. Yeah, I could do that for you. Um, so uh, the project is to replace um, those uh, four uh, pole structures. Um, they're, they're wood, they're very old and dilapidated and, and dire need of, um, of replacement with uh, steel poles. Uh, in order to get in there, the 100% uh, of that area uh, that Deb outlined is, is, uh, is wetland just about. 
Now there is a little finger of upland right where we where we position the uh, the entrance road uh, off of off the uh, uh, Dros Drosnik Drive, and <coughs> we looked at yes. A different. I'm. I'm just seeing. Looks like a detail. Um, I'm not. I'm not able to follow. Yeah, we blow that up. Yep. Okay. All right. No, that's. Yep. I'm I, getting down. So is this any better? Yeah, a little bit. Can you just orient me a little bit? I'm sorry. I'm not. Yeah. Sure. Where are the wetlands? That would be a start. This yeah. this dark right here. The dark that you can see. Oh, but that okay. The dark is the stream, and uh, where uh, it, it the stream, and you can actually see the the main channel in that larger blob is open water all the way, moving right to left. It flows right to left to a head wall, and then goes under uh, the road. Yep, there you go. The actual wetland flagging. Um, this almost looks like a black and white instead of color. But um, very just hard for me to get myself. Yeah, up. yeah. But the wetlands are much are much larger in the area. So where you see, um, uh, all, you know, pretty much a hundred percent of of what you see from behind the houses to the north to to the drive, and from and the and what you see here from left uh, to right um, is all is all wetlands. So um, how we propose to work in, uh, in wetlands and the way uh, utility work pretty much does this quite often is we put wood matting um, in multiple layers uh, across both wetlands and upland you know, as well, just so we don't dig up, dig up a lot of uh, soil. And then, uh, and then we surround the poles with a larger, what we call a work path. And Right, and then to connect to the other work pad to do the other two structures, you see the long linear uh, piece of, uh, of matting. That is all uh, herbaceous wetlands for the most part. It's almost 100% Phragmites. So we, we looked at um, other alternatives uh, to get in here. And if we came through the ledges, um, okay, well, let me back up. So. Um, when the uh, almost, uh, if you look at the uh, proposed hay bales, see detail sheet, that lower yeah. arrow. Yeah, the lower arrow on that, there's like two arrows. Yeah, so that lower arrow is where the uplands extends to about that point, and then it's wetlands in to the stream. And we would, we would actually build a stream, uh, a matting bridge over the stream so it could flow under and we could, wouldn't have to drive through the stream to get out to the but that all that you see from that arrow and, and all the other rest of the matting uh, to the north is all 100% in wetlands. But the, the wetlands out uh, behind the houses, uh, as I said, is all Phragmites. We, yeah, have for, we have forested wetlands on the south side of the stream, of which we will need to cut uh, a number of trees. They're mostly saplings, but there is uh, there are three large hazard trees as work as, uh, in the industry we call hazard trees because they're tall enough to reach the wires if something blows them over or they fall over. So it just so happens that we need to get in that's the shortest distance. So we looked at three, you know, at, at approaching this area in, in from four different locations. You know, one is, you know, the preferred alternative is right off the drive. It's the one that we're proposing here. And the matting in, in this alternative is uh, is in within uh, is 80 feet long in wetlands, and the rest is upland. If we came in from uh, the east through the ledges, we would have uh, we would be uh, that matting access would be 200 feet long in the wetlands. Plus, it would go into the ledges, and we'd ha uh, we'd have the impact of the traffic you know, people living there and trucks coming back and forth. And if there's a playground, we'd be cutting off the, it, well, we wouldn't cut off, cut it off, but we would definitely impair the, and limit the access to the playground in the lower right-hand corner. If we came in from the west, there's a driveway 
uh, an undeveloped lot that's actually for sale. I'm going to uh, I'm going to go to this just so you can kind of yeah. see where the ledges is and what what your alternatives you're talking about. So here are the ledges. Right. So we have to drive through the ledges. Right. Roadway and then yeah and then come in from the east and that would be more than twice as much matting in the mm -hmm. wetlands as well as the disruption of a of a you know uh, a condo a housing complex so to speak and that and we'd be driving between the complex and the pool and the recreation area and then not they just rebuilt and expanded their playground closer to the road so that wasn't the most desirable uh alternative so we looked at coming in from the west and there's actually a building lot with a driveway and quite nice uh, uh plantings but no house and so we'd have to come in his driveway. Yep, right where uh, Deb is showing. Mm -hmm. and once we got to the wetlands, we would have to cross 220 feet of wetlands just to get to the work path. So both of those are more than double what we're proposing now. The coming from the north is the shortest distance, but it would be through somebody's yard, yeah. and and that's just not acceptable. The, you know, the, we're we're expecting this process without. You know any serious weather delays because the weather's going to be perfect from now on the rest of the year that's my prediction and uh but it, 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 we're you know we're we're estimating five to six weeks so you just can't drive through somebody's yard for five to six weeks you know and and then that all that truck traffic would have to wind through that whole subdivision so that's how we ended up with the alternative that we're proposing to you tonight and I'm going to just show a couple of the pictures that you had in your um, your packet so they can see what you're talking about with the matting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, the, the wood matting is made out of um, uh, eight to 10 inch square uh, 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 logs, so to speak, or, you know, and it's 16 feet long and eight to 10 inches in, in, uh, in size. And what they do is they tie with metal rods, they tie four of those together, and that's considered uh, one mat. So it's basically four feet by 16 feet, and maybe eight, depending. On. So we use a we use a uh, uh, a small uh, uh, articulated ex excavator or whatever, but with a special uh, uh, grabber on the end to place those down. And then we place them in, if we need two layers or three layers, we put them at uh, 90 degrees to each other or 180 degrees. No, 90 degrees. And then, uh, and then you drive over that and it's amazing how well it protects the wetlands. You do have to cut some shrubbery and, you know, sometimes, but most of the time the shrubbery is small. We just can lay the matting, you know, come in kind of sideways as we drop it and just bend the shrubs over so they'll come back pretty quickly. But in cases where it's really thick and it's gonna you know, not let the uh, matting sit flat, we, uh, we mow you know, we mow it down a bit, but we leave root stock in, 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 uh, in you know, uh, enough of the plants sticking up uh, for shrubs. The trees, we have, to, we have to cut, but we leave the roots in. We don't uh, root balls. We don't excavate anything in the wetland soil and all the herbaceous stuff you know we have tried over the years in different situations to replant with wetland seed mix but because everything stays undisturbed and not ripped up it really comes back uh the next growing season as you can see in these photos so i, I included a couple examples of projects that here in new england where we've had a cross broad wetland uh, areas to get to to the uh, structure poles. Um, so, so Clint, this, we, this matting comes up, does it? I'm sorry? Uh, does the matting I, then come up? Yeah, when the job's all over, then they pick up the matting as they go out. So they okay. pick, they, they pick up and what, what, what happens is they back a truck up to the, to the backside of the machine and the machine lifts those up and places on a, a special truck that uh, just, we're handling matting and then that truck pulls out and another one backs in and they slowly work their way back out so in in this case uh to put in gravel and you know and then maybe some fabric under gravel which you know was kind of 
how they used to do it. You know, it was just so, so much disturbance and it, and it was hard to say you weren't, you know, you weren't having a permanent impact on um, that hmm. part of it. These typically one growing season is, is it's back, you know, and what you've done actually is, is cut a, a, a wet meadow or maybe a scrub shrub meadow combination meadow in a forested area. So it really adds diversity to the system as well. And then, you know, over time, it just, it, you know, you, you don't have to do any plantings, you don't have to do any digging. So when we, the, uh, the Army Corps um, does the, uh, the permitting for all the utilities, the New England division that does all the permitting for uh, all the New England utilities, uh, they, they have no restriction on the amount of square feet associated with temporary matting. I mean, we still will still submit a permit and identify it. So, but for permanent excavation in the wetland, or you know, either deposition or ex excavation, um, they have a limit of five thousand square feet before it gets elevated to the next highest, the next level of of uh, scrutiny, and then and, and then over over uh, a half acre, it goes to what they call full permitting effort in. So over the years, um, we've come to agreement that we used to try to take the old, you know, we will uh, grab the old pole, wooden poles, and we will draw them out. And, you know, if there, a little clump of, of soil does, you know, come up, you know, uh, you know, on the edge of the pole in there, we, we would just, you know, uh, smooth it back in with a hand shovel or whatever. But, and then, and then we drill, we put the new poles in a, in a new hole. And, and the Army Corps considers that, uh, you know, a uh, uh, no net loss, you know, uh, break even scenario. So you're, you know, you're basically taking where the old pole was and the, and the gravel that surrounded the edge of it, whatever, and swapping it for the new uh, pole. So, uh, so the application to, uh, to you guys and the one that will, I'll, I'll submit after, um, you know, after we come, uh, you know, we get your uh, your uh, input. We'll we'll say no permanent wetland impacts, and I think you know, memory serves me right. We're we're going to have uh, uh, where is that? Really? So, Jose, it's right on the plan there, <laughs> but I can't see it. Um, how many square feet of temporary impact on that? Oh, wait a minute, I got it right here. We had a uh, matted wetland area of point two six acres. Okay. Which ends up being about 11,000 square feet. Correct, okay, so there. So um, that that uh, kind of in a nutshell is how how this would take place, uh, how we protect the wetlands when we're doing it. There, like I said, there will be there will be a few trees that need to be cut, but there uh, this is not uh, one of the real high uh, transmission towers, and so these trees are right at the edge of the Phragmites, and therefore susceptible to high winds can get right to them or whatever. And push them over, and 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 they would catch the wires, and we, you know, then we'd be in trouble. So, I kind of aimed it, and now those trees are located right um, where the uh, just before the matting crosses the street. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. huh. Yeah, and that those kind of activities are usually. Uh, Taken care of by what what, what the utility would call routine uh, clearing or uh, right away maintenance or for yeah. re, for reliability. Right. Yeah. Veg management is a big thing now for resiliency for all the utilities, uh, and obviously California hasn't been doing that for a long time, and that they've actually started many of those fires over the last few years from their their uh, trees falling into their power lines and starting fires. So. That's a New England is doing a really good job in, in chasing that. It's it's a you know it's a little cumbersome uh, 
if uh, the trees happen to be in somebody's private yard, but still in our easement. You know, but that's and so they would be cutting those. They should be cutting those trees. Like rotten utilities uh, should be going in there anyway and, and uh, culling out. They don't need the clear cut. They just need to grab the ones that are too tall. But that's 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 not part of this application. Um, and uh, that's uh, something that they would do is their maintenance. And there's a whole different process for, for maintenance of utility lines and weapons. Could I ask a question? Um, um, how, how much area around where the poles are? Do you have to put cement or anything like that around those metal poles or do they just stick in on their own? No, in this case, um, uh, what they, they do is they, we, uh, it's a metal cylinder uh, you know, uh, that- If you go down to slide can. 22. Yeah, the next page has, a, has an image of it on the right side of the, uh, of the page. And so uh, that goes in the ground uh, and then uh, they you know, excavate the soil, slip that in and then stand the pole up in, um, in the center of that and then backfill and compact gravel around it. And then it gets it's finished off at a level with the, uh, in wetlands, we have to do it level. We, in, in the uplands, we would leave it up like six to eight inches. Um, in, for all in, intents and purposes, uh, you wouldn't know that that's underneath there. No. There's no no exposed concrete or anything else. It, it basically just looks like the pole in the ground like you would normally. This is a pretty typical installation that I, I'd be willing to bet you've seen just about everywhere around town without knowing yeah. what's underneath it. Well, I just didn't know. I know the, I know what the wooden ones look like. I wasn't sure what the metal ones. Sometimes, you know, you see that cement apron around some of them that, that I'm yeah, sure. Uh, those are uh, usually uh, bigger uh, okay. poles than these. These are kind of like, uh, you know, for lack of a better word, these are like intermediate size poles. This isn't uh, one of those large lines, but in the big ones, they need many times they need a concrete foundation uh, with bolts, you know, bolt, bolts sticking up and the pole gets bolted down onto the concrete platform. And uh, yeah, so yeah, not that tight. Okay. So they the also go back to the edge of the pole and it'll actually, you know, look just like it looked, you know, before we started. I, I want to be clear as well. We're not adding any additional length to these poles. This is for, for all intents and purposes, a, a like for like replacement to the wood poles that are there. The difference is we're going with steel to eliminate the need to come back here and do this again when those wood poles get deteriorated uh, and to increase reliability in the area because it is hard to get to and there is wetland. It's a very hard to access area. So the steel material is strictly for that, but as far as the size of the pole, it's a like for like replacement. Gotcha. Can I ask how old these poles are that are existing? Those poles have been in there since the line got installed in the 1970s, I believe. Yeah, I think that's correct. Right. Okay, thank you for that. All right, that was a great presentation. Barbara, do you have questions? No, I think I'd like to see this. Is so what I, yeah, I agree. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, oh, so what I did, if you go in where uh, it's it's fairly easy to access because it's like an upland knoll. It must have been built either by the ledges or it could have been built when they did the original line. You know, they probably put fill in there in 1970. I'm sure nobody was getting a permit for anything then. And uh, so I marked the outside by the sidewalk with long uh, vertical uh, blue tape. So that would be the place that we'd be entering. And then if you just work your way straight in, you'll see, then I tied uh, a blue ribbon around um, the, uh, the trees that we wanna take down. And they're right before you get to the stream. Uh, the wetland flags are, are pink with the words wetland delineation on them. So you, you'll, you'll run into those first before you get to the, the blue flag. So I tried to make it uh, easy to find and, and, uh, and find your way in. If you like, I'm in the area. This is Kevin. Uh, 
you like to walk it down, I would be glad to uh, explore the area and then explain, you know, convert the information that's on the presentation to the actual work site. Uh, yeah, that, if, that, if that helps. Yeah, typically the uh, comes with us on the wetland sidewalks. Um, it's not obviously mandatory, but uh, typically one representative from the applicant comes. But as long as we have Deb, we have no fear. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So when what's what's a good time for you guys? Um, our next meeting is not until September eight. So there's a bit of August left. Uh, Barbara's. Wednesday's not a I could do Monday afternoon, Thursday afternoon. Tuesday is good. Yeah, those are good for me also. Which day? Yeah. Uh, those Tuesday. are good for me also. Um, we've got time. I just know that next week I have house guests Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so I wouldn't be available then. Okay. I won't either. So that would be great if we could okay. skip that week. Okay. Just want to let you know I'm here. So oh, would hi, Rob. How are you? <laughs> I told Mike, I said, is the house for sale? Hey, Linda, you're, you want oh, to yeah. move? There we go. Um, okay. Anyway, so. Um, I'm sorry. Say again, please. No, I was just asking you to mute. We could hear what was going on. Oh, I did. There we go. It's okay. <laughs> um, I can't. Okay. So the, so next, the next week, the 23rd, maybe Monday afternoon or? Uh, I know Barbara is. Too that would be no, I, I can't make, make that. Okay. Oh, okay. The 23rd is all right. It's the 30th that I can't. Okay. Oh, okay. 23rd is okay. All right. Let's say the 23rd at uh, one o'clock. Does that work for you guys? I sure, can, I can make that. All right, twenty third one. We'll site walk this, and I know we'll get a um, a letter to tell us where to go on yes. drive. Yep, and you all. will get a notice and all. Yep. Yep. Perfect. This is an interesting Zoom meeting because there's a lot of background noise and yeah, and pictures are going off and on. And Barbara left and came back, and <laughs> and I don't know where Dave is. Well, I don't. I couldn't have. have I was here. It just faded. Uh, yeah. Oh, geez. Anyway, well, uh, we've been having Zoom issues with other meetings too. So, should we make a motion to accept this application, Jeff? Or, or you don't have to make a motion to accept it. I mean, if you want to classify it now, you certainly can. Okay. Would you guys yeah. like to classify that? I make a motion to classify uh, the utility um, installation uh, minor. Barbara Williams, you want to second that? Oh dear. Um, okay, I think we better just wait till the next meeting to, to classify it then, because I don't know where Barbara is. Mm. She's she's here. Um, you can, you can there she is. Uh, wow. Hey. Um, oh boy. This is this is. Are we okay to take a vote, Deb? Is you know what? What you, you can go ahead and second if you like, um, Eunice, and then we can vote. Barbara, you can just raise your hand. All right, I'll, voting in favor. I'll make a second to uh, classify this application uh, for the uh, replacement of telephone poles off Drysdale Drive as minor. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 There we go. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. All right, so we've got it classified and we've got a site walk set for the 23rd of August at 1 p.m. Excellent. Thank you. Yes, and I will send out a meeting notice to Deb because I think I have your contact information. You do. Actually, this is a public meeting, so we will do a meeting notice and post an agenda, um, okay. and we'll, we'll get that to you. Sounds good. All right, so we'll see you third or Monday, the 23rd at 1300. Sounds good. All right, well, thanks for the excellent uh, map. Uh, a presentation, Deb. <laughs> sure. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay.
other than that, I, mean, I don't think we better do much more. Holy smokes, this has been, uh, yeah. I don't know what's, my picture was off and then I know Barbara left because it said Barbara Williams leaving and then she oh, reached. I'm, it, the machine did it, not me. Well, I know, <laughs> I, never. Anyway, just, just quickly, um, you know, Ank Ledger Road, I've driven by there. It looks like they've got uh, some seed down. They've got some uh, straw over it. Yes, they like, do. Um, and there was some question and thank Bruce, by the way, for sending out um, his letter to say that he had looked at it and all that kind of stuff. Um, and we had a question, they had a question on what to plant. Um, I thought we were pretty clear about that, but. Right, but Bruce was going out there to meet with them to reemphasize what exactly it was that you wanted planted. Good, 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 okay. Well, and so we'll just assume that they'll have that planted um, sooner rather than later. Probably, I mean, it's pretty hot right now. Maybe, maybe next week or the week after. But yeah. 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 That's um, anything else that you guys have on your mind? No. All right. Anybody okay. want to motion to adjourn? Ah! So moved. Second. Second. All right. We'll see you guys on the twenty third. Oh my. I don't know how much longer I can hold on, Deb. <laughs> okay. Right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye-bye. <laughs>